So unfortunately, my printer is um, not working at the moment, so I haven't been able to print off the questions. So I'm going to do it by annotating on screen like this, and then hopefully we'll be back to normal. Um, if you prefer it this way, just let me know and I will try and do it like this in the future as well. So these are the RPA questions or questions based on the required practicals for the P4 topics, the electricity RPA questions, IV characteristics, resistance in a circuit. So question one is for the foundation paper. Figure one shows the circuit symbol for three different components. We have A, B and C. Which component is a variable resistor? So component A is a variable resistor. Um, this arrow shows that we can vary the resistor, um, vary the resistance, sorry. Um, if there wasn't an arrow, if it was just this plain rectangle, then, uh, then that would just be a fixed resistor. Which component is a thermistor? So that's C. Um, I, I always remember it as being like a, it looks like a hockey stick or an ice hockey stick and ice hockey reminds me of the cold, which reminds me of the temperature, which is thermistor. However you want to remember it, it doesn't really matter, but you need to know that this is a thermistor. In which component will the resistance decrease when the temperature increases? So a thermistor again is a temperature dependent resistor, so C. And in which component will the resistance decrease when the light intensity increases? So that's B because it's a LDR, a light dependent resistor. Um, and we can think of an LDR, um, the light bit being these arrows here. You don't always see it with a circle drawn around it. Um, and if you're asked to draw an LDR and you draw a normal resistor with just the arrows without the circle, then you get the marks as well. So in figure two, um, we have four different arrangements of resistors. So we have P, so two 10 ohm resistors in series. We have Q, two 10 ohm resistors in parallel, R, two 5 ohm resistors in series, and S, two 5 ohm resistors in parallel. Two of the arrangements are in series, two are in parallel. Describe the difference between a series and a parallel arrangement, and it is two marks. So um, series has one loop or path the charges to um, to follow uh, and a parallel has more than one loop or path more than one loop or path okay so series one one loop one path uh, parallel more than one loop path branch whatever it is that you want to um, want to call it um, which arrangement has a resistance of 10 ohms? And then which arrangement has the highest resistance? Okay, so um, you aren't expected to be able to calculate the resistance in a parallel circuit, but you are expected to be able to calculate the resistance in a series circuit and to know what the pattern is in a parallel circuit. So um, to calculate the resistance in series, you just add the, the, the values of the resistors together, so 10 plus 10 would be 20 ohms in total. Five plus five is 10 ohms in total. So we've, we've answered this question, which arrangement has a resistance of 10 ohms? That's R. Which arrangement has the highest resistance? Okay, so at the moment that's P because we know that that is 20. And let's just make sure that we know what would happen with the resistance in um, parallel. The rule for, the, for like resistors in parallel is that the total resistance decreases the number of like the more branches you put on it and the total resistance is always less than the lowest individual resistor so this total resistance here is going to be less than 10 and this total resistance here is going to be less than 5 you need to know that as a rule um, as like a pattern for resistance in parallel but you don't need to be able to actually um, calculate it that would come at, at a level okay so the highest resistance therefore is still this 20 ohm resistance in p a student connects a resistor to a cell for 60 seconds the current through the resistor is 0 0.97 amps calculate the charge flow Use the equation charge flow equals current times time. Give your answer to two significant figures. OK, so I'm just going to substitute into this. So my charge is going to be equal to the current, which is 0 0.97, multiplied by the time, which is 60. OK, 
Okay, so always remembering that time should be given in seconds. So if I draw my calculator 0 0.97 multiplied by 60, then I get 58.2. Um, and in an exam, that would uh, that would gain me two of the three marks, but I've underlined this other bit, two significant figures. So therefore, and this is three significant figures. So because it's 0.2, that would round down. So my charge flow is 58 coulombs. Okay, a student investigates how the length of a piece of wire affects its resistance. The diagram shows the apparatus used. What is the length? of wire between the two crocodile clips shown in the diagram. Okay, so we need to work out the difference between these values. Okay, so here, if we look really close, we can see that this is 12.5 centimeters. And on here, we've got 30, 31, 32, so it's over 30.3. Okay, so if we do the difference between this, so 30.3 minus 12.5, then we get 17. 0.8 centimeters. So write the equation which links current potential difference and resistance. Um, I would write it as V equals IR because that's the easiest way to rearrange it from that. If you wrote R equals V over I that would also be acceptable because that's another way that you get given it um, in, in the topic uh, but this is easier to, to rearrange so V equals IR um, you can give it in symbol format as long as you get it correct, obviously, or you could write potential difference equals current times resistance, doesn't really matter. For the experiment shown in the diagram, the student recorded a potential difference of 3.22 volts, a current of 2.18 amps. Calculate the resistance of the length of wire between the crocodile clips. Give your answer to three significant figures, and it is a four mark question. So usually what we have to do for four marks is one of the marks is going to be to give it three significant figures. So that means there's three marks for the actual calculation thing. Um, that usually means that there's some rearrangement that's involved, and that's because they expect you to learn it as V equals IR. If you do it as R equals V over I, actually you're not, you're, you're re you've rearranged algebraically already. So, um, okay, so we have V equals IR. So we'll do it the slightly more complicated way so that we can practice rearranging. We're going to substitute in our values first and then rearrange. And the reason we're going to do that is because you get marks for substituting in. So you would get one mark for writing 3.22 is equal to 2.18 multiplied by R. You get one mark for that. If you try and rearrange algebraically and you, you get it wrong, um, you get zero. So um, it, it's just daft. You need to get into the habit of substituting in and then rearranging. So I've got 2.18 multiplied by R. I want to do the opposite of times 2.18, which is divided by 2.18. Whatever I do to this side, I also have to do to this side. So I'm going to do 3.22 over 2.18 is going to give me my value of R. So 3.2, whoops, 3.22 over 2.18 is uh, 1.47706 um, but I don't want to write a big long number. I've got um, to give it to three significant figures. So practicing giving things to a certain number of significant figures is a good kind of revision strategy. What I normally try and ask students to do is to think about it like this. If I go one, two, three significant figures and I just draw a line like that. And then you look at the next one and that tells you whether you're going to round up or round down because it's seven that would round up. So therefore, 1.48 is, uh, is, is the resistance to three significant figures. So the student used constantin wire. The resistance of constantin only changes a small amount when its temperature changes. Suggest why using constantin is an advantage in the experiment. So it's worth two marks. Okay, so um, the temperature will increase uh, during the experiment. Okay, oops, experiment. And the reason that the temperature will increase during the experiment is because energy is dissipated at p equals i squared r. Um, 
and so therefore yeah the temperature is going to be uh, is going to increase and uh, so if constantin is used this won't affect the results much because if the resistance changed a lot when the temperature increase temperature change and the temperature increases therefore we can't know that the resistance changing is to do with the length because it might be also to do with the temperature we want to make sure that we're only changing one thing and if the temperature is also changing that's changing two things which means that our results aren't going to be as valid now we've got the students results one of the results in the table is anomalous for what length of wire is the resistance anomalous so let's have a look at the resistance and think about what the pattern is so we've got 1.67 2.49 3.31 Okay, 5.26, 4.98, 5.78, 6.65. 6 so we can tell that something weird is going on here because we've got 5 point something, 9 point something, 4 point something, 5 point something. So something is definitely wrong here. Now, your gut feeling might give you, say, six, uh, the one for 60.0 centimeters, and the reason be being that it goes 545. Five. So you might think, oh, it's dipping down and then going back up again. But Think about the overall pattern of the results. You've got 1.67 and then 2.49. So it goes up by just less than one. And then 2.49 to 3.31 goes up by just less than one. 3.31 to 5.26 goes up by almost two. And then we're going down and then we're going back up again by just less than one and then up again by just less than one. So actually, the anomalous result is this one where the jump is by more than more than one, basically. So uh, almost two. So you would expect this to be um, 4.1, maybe. Um, and that would because then your jump up here is just less than one. If you go to 4.98, that's almost five. But that's still less than one ohm that it would be increasing by. So always think about like, what are we what are we increasing by? What would we expect the pattern to be? OK, so the length is 50.0 centimetres. What could have caused the anomalous result? So the ammeter gave a reading that was too low. The wire was shorter than the measured value. The temperature of the wire decreased. The voltmeter gave a reading that was too low. So this is um, a, 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 like a, a bit where we can talk about what this actually means. This this reading was higher than we expected. OK, so let's just write out the equation. R equals V over I. Um, this is higher than expected. So what that means for us to get an R value that is higher than expected, either the current, something has made the current lower or something has made the potential difference higher. OK, so the ammeter gave a reading that was too low. Well, OK, that sounds like exactly like what we've just talked about. But let's just look at these other ones to start off with. The wire was shorter than the measured value. OK, so if it was shorter than the measured value, then uh, the, we would expect the current to be higher because the resistance would be we'd, well, the resistance would be lower. Um, so that that's not right. Um, the temperature of the wire decreased. Well, we know that as temperature increases, the resistance increases in a metal. So therefore, if the temperature decreased, we would expect the resistance to be lower rather than higher. The voltmeter gave a reading that was too low. If you had a lower number on the top of the um, equation, then therefore the resistance would be lower as well. So always think about it in terms of the equation that's given so that you can um, to, to think about what would happen to those those numbers. Um, okay, so a student, so this question, question three, is um, higher paper only, so if you were doing the foundation paper, you can stop here. If you're doing the higher paper, then, then carry on for the rest of the paper. So question three, a student is investigating some electrical components. Describe how the student could set up a circuit to find the resistance of a lamp. You should include a circuit diagram in your answer. Now, um, where the, the, you would normally have a gap here. But uh, unfortunately, um, for some reason, when I put these questions together, it didn't didn't give you a question like a gap. Just went straight with the lines. OK, but what we would have is we would have some sort of power supply and we would have an ammeter. And this would be connected in series 
with a lamp and a voltmeter in parallel across it. Uh, you could also stick a variable resistor in here if you um, if you wanted to, but um, it's not really necessary for this. Okay, so um, you would want to measure the potential difference and the current. Um, and then calculate R using R equals V over I. It's only a four mark question. It's not a six mark question. So you're going to get marks for the circuit because it says you should include a circuit diagram. Um, and then all you're doing is to say what you would measure and then what you would calculate. Um, you could, uh, I don't know, you could talk about like repeating values or whatever, but you're not going to get credit for it necessarily unless they say something along the lines of um, explain how you would ensure your answer is as accurate as possible or, or anything like that. It is only asking you about the resistance of a lamp. It's not asking you about the like current potential difference characteristic or anything like that. It is only asking you about finding the resistance in R equals V over I. OK, the student is given an electrical component in a sealed box. She has to find out what the electrical component is by experiment. The student records the current and potential difference for the component. The results are shown in the figure below. So the first thing is that you should recognise what the um, IV characteristic like graphs look like. Hopefully, even without looking at the next question, you should be able to tell that this is um, a diode. Um, explain how the student could know uh, explain how the student could know that the electrical component in a sealed box is not an ohmic conductor. Uh, okay, well, the first thing to do would be to say what we mean by an ohmic conductor. Um, so an ohmic conductor is where current and PD are directly proportional. Um, and we could look at this graph and this graph is definitely not directly proportional because it's not it goes through the origin but it's it's not a straight line okay so um this graph is curved not straight so what is the electrical component in the sealed box explain your answer so we can look at the graph and it's this characteristic shape so in the negative direction, the resistance is extremely high. So even when the potential difference increases in the negative direction, the current remains at zero. So the resistance is extremely high and at in positive potential differences. So in the positive direction, the resistance decreases very quickly, which is why the current increases um, so much. So the component is a diode. And the explanation is because uh, in the negative direction it has a very high resistance in the positive direction R decreases um, R decreases quickly okay so it has very low uh, low resistance okay so uh, use the graph to determine the resistance of the component at 2.3 volts. So because it's a curve, to work out the resistance, um, we would need to draw a tangent. Um, so, but let's just re remind ourselves. So R equals V over I. Um, and our gradient is going to be the equivalent of I over V, because it's going to be the, the, the uh, rise over the run. So the rise being what's on the y-axis, which is the current, and the run being the x-axis, which is V. Uh, so therefore, the gradient is equal to 1 over R. So in order to work out the resistance, we need to do, um, we work out the gradient, and then we work out um, what R is from being one over, so we, we flip it. So we find the reciprocal. Um, so I've already drawn the tangent on here because um, it's quite fiddly to do it on a um, on a like graphics tablet. It's much easier to do it with a ruler. 
So finding a tangent at 2.3. Um, so I've made it quite easy for myself by taking the line all the way down to the axes. So if this is 2.5 and then it goes all the way down to zero, then the rise is 2.5. So um, I can do the rise over run, 2.5 over, and then this is going from like 1.6 to 3.0. So 3.0 minus 1.6 is 1.4. So if I do that, 2.5 over 1.4, uh, 1.78, etc. However, that is one over the gradient, that uh, one over the resistance. So I want to do, if I, on my calculator, I'll just press the X to the minus one button, and that will then give me R, which is 0 0.56. And they would accept a range of answers for this between 0 0.50 and 0 0.65 um, is their range of values because that accounts for the fact that your gradient might be slightly different because drawing a tangent can be a little bit tricky. So you just need to remember that because it's curved that's why we have to draw a tangent to it um, and that the gradient is not the resistance, the gradient is 1 over the resistance so therefore you need to find the reciprocal um, in order to find the resistance.